Hey there, welcome to this uh, ICOM ICR8500 review. This is a 2009 model, so by the date plate on the back it was uh, actually made in uh, 2009. Um, basically means that compared to the first original probably there were some modifications done on the circuit board to uh, fix maybe some of the bugs that people reported or uh, but generally it should pretty much perform uh, like the original so uh, this is a all mode general coverage receiver communications receiver it starts at 100 kilohertz and goes way up to 1999.99999 megahertz what you're watching now is the actual uh, maximum frequency so uh, you could say it goes up to 2 gigahertz it's an all mode AM, FM, FM wide, single sideband, upper, lower, and CW. It has many great features that will be actually uh, looked and reviewed on uh, other videos. So if you want to have a complete instruction manual on this radio, it's going to be online on this channel. Uh, basically, you've got um, all the almost all the features you need and the faceplate you've got all those buttons that uh, go with all the modes and um, there are uh, something like uh, uh, 1200 memory channels in here and so um, you can uh, really program lots of stuff or put them in banks and even have uh, what ICOM calls uh, scan edges which is uh, simply a way of saying that you can scan between two frequency limits so uh, it's about the same thing that was called limits on, for example, uh, realistic and Radio Shack scanners. And even some uh, unit and scanners at the limits. Um, basically, it's a very good performer all the way from long wave way up to the 2 GHz band. That is the scary part when you buy a receiver. Because most wideband receivers actually don't perform that well uh, on some of the bands. And um, a lot of the... I would say uh, gigahertz range receivers actually perform pretty bad on shortwave. This one is really an exception. Uh, very good shortwave reception with a little drawback. The AM filter is a little wide. It could have been uh, slightly more um, uh, narrower, I would say, to uh, take out the interference from channels that are close together. But apart from that, um, it's very sensitive in the shortwave bands, the medium wave, and even the long wave bands. It's probably what I would call the best scanner I've ever used. It's really not a scanner. Don't mix the two. A communications receiver is not a scanner per se. And um, basically what you have is um, a very good performer all the way up to 2 gigahertz. I've listened to lots of signals and there are some examples of uh, signals that I hear and lots more coming up on this channel. And uh, basically you've got your front panel, that's pretty cool. It's in a stylish aluminum cabinet that's uh, charcoal colored. And uh, if you look at the back of the receiver, which we'll go now, uh, we'll see that the back of the receiver actually has uh, an IC V uh, or CIV, sorry, uh, compatible RS232 computer control, and I actually have an adapter here because I'm using uh, the computer control with this USB to serial adapter that works really well, and I'll have a video on that. Uh, the back of the receiver, of course, on the top you've got your speaker here. Um, I've replaced it with a separate speaker because the top speaker is never that good for listening. Uh, of course on the back you've got all sorts of uh, gadgets so you've got your antenna connector and type for the uh, so don't look at this because I, I still don't have my end type that I haven't received yet and you've got also your uh, basic PL259 uh, connector for the shortwave so two separate antennas are needed you've got your power adapter your output for the audio this is a little thingy where you can just stick it out and put the included cable to power from a 12 volt DC um, source which is pretty cool because uh, no electricity you can actually 
uh, make it work with a 12 volt source of battery. Uh, in my case, I have a battery, a, uh, um, a acid, lead acid battery that I use. Uh, you've got also all sorts of outputs here. You've got an input here for the shortwave antenna that is also an RCA jack with a different um, resistance. So if you have a long wire, uh, like I do, technically it might be better to actually have it in the RCA jack rather than the, uh, PO, the PL259 here, which is 50 ohms. You've got the ground screw right here at the bottom. Here you've got outputs and you've got um, 5 volt IF outs, which is uh, unusual for a receiver and it gives some flexibility to actually add different um, options, including a uh, band scope, uh, stuff like that. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And you've got here the little jack that's a CIV output, so you can control the radio. I prefer controlling it out of the RS232 uh, port here, but since most computers don't have any. USB ports, it might be better to, um, uh, sorry, serial ports, uh, especially laptops. Um, it could be okay to use from the uh, little jack here, but um, if you get one of those little adapters that I have here, it works well. So, a wide range of features, very sensitive from 100 kilohertz all the way up to the 2 gigahertz band and uh, look for uh, instructional videos on how to use it that I'm going to be showing up on this uh, channel and also lots of videos showing you its uh, operation and uh, hope you subscribe and come back often to the uh, ICOM, IC, uh, the ICOM ICR 8520 uh, channel this channel is dedicated only for two ICOM receivers the 8500 and the R20 portable communications receiver so thanks for watching 73s and uh, hope to see you back again. Bye-bye.